مرحبا فيكم بحلقه جديده من برنامج بيدازل بالبدايه حابه اتشكركم الاسبوع الماضي وصلتنا كثير من الاقتراحات والاراء على صفحاتنا على السوشيال ميديا وهالشي كثير بيعني لنا معكم رؤى وخلونا نبلش حلقتنا اليوم رح نكفي جولتنا بمعرض الاكسبو، بس هالمرة رح تكون شوي غير لأنه رح ترافقنا الأستاذة منى العلي لتعرفنا أكثر وتشرح لنا أكثر عن المعرض من الداخل، خلونا ما كثير نضيع وقت ونشوف سوا. Welcome to Terra, the Sustainability Pavilion. This is one of our signature pavilions that we have in Expo 2020. Uh, as you've heard, Expo 2020 has the theme of connecting minds, creating the future. And we have three sub-themes, opportunity, mobility, and sustainability. And as a host country, we are supposed to translate those sub-themes into visitor experiences. That's why we have this pavilion dedicated to the sub-theme of sustainability. What we do in this pavilion is that we take our visitors on a journey that is very emotional, very immersive, very theatrical. Mm -hmm. uh, we talk about a topic that is as big and as important as sustainability, but in an untraditional way. Terra has been designed by Grimshaw architects who are very well known when it comes to their sustainable architecture. And the content and the exhibition that you're going to see is has been done by Think Design that are based in the US um, with partnership with Eden Project in the UK. So now we'll go through the experience. As I mentioned, the experience is very immersive, very theatrical. We give our visitors the choice between two journeys. So either they take a journey into the ocean or the forest. Today, we're going to go into the forest. Sure. Please. So here we are in the forest, but we're not in the areas that we're used to being in. Like we're used to walking, you know, in, on the forest, but now we're under the forest. So we are amongst the roots of the trees. We're actually walking amongst them. And what we're seeing is how these roots are, you know, the way that trees connect with each other, because the trees are connected through their root system into what's called the wood wide web. Right. And, you know, they communicate with each other, they exchange nutrients, they warn each other if there is any danger, the mother tree protects baby tree and so on. And so what we're trying to achieve here is to show our visitors how similar these you know, these beings are with us human beings as well. Absolutely. And it's things that we don't think about. And how also wonderful these areas are, how beautiful the natural world around us is, and how important it is for us to preserve them as well. Here we are in the consumption hall, where we see the madness of human consumption. What you're seeing here is this giant machine taking in resources from minerals, animals, plants, and, you know, eating them, transforming them, destroying them, and bringing them out as products. So some of these products are important and we need them in our day-to-day -day lives, and some of them are useless. And for example, you know, we have, we see a pile of plastic mustache, and you think to yourself, I mean, what what's the waste? use? Exactly, waste? wasting this much resources for stuff as small and as useless as, as those. There are a lot of things that we see in the consumption hall, and this is one of the other things that we see in this area, which we call the endless wardrobe. And it's an indication of our endless amount of consumption and buying of and throwing them away and without thinking of the amount of water that goes into the production of things like a cotton, each of exactly, of a cotton t-shirt for example and we use as you see a very uh, hum we, we depend a lot on dark humor for this so for example here we say why not come and consume more don't think about the 2700 liters that go into the no. you know the production of a of a t-shirt for example and that's what we try to do here we try to get people thinking reflecting of their day-to-day actions, of the choices that they make in life, and their values as well. We're now entering the Would You Rather area. And as we walk in, what we do here is that we pose questions to our visitors. These questions don't have a wrong or right answer, but it's just to get people thinking and reflecting, and also to challenge them and challenge their values and have challenge them- the moral values. Exactly. So an example of that is the question we have here. So the question says, would you rather kill the last panda, but no one knows that you did it, or not kill the last panda, but everyone thinks you did it? I mean, there is no right or wrong answer, but it's just to get you thinking. And because if we continue, you know, progressing in our day-to-day -day life, with our day-to-day -day actions, the way that we are now, we will 
reach a point where we will face challenging questions and challenging decisions that we need to make in our lives. So this is what this place is all about. A lot of people have information about the countries and the countries. بس انك تكون طفل عمرك 10 سنين وبتعرف عواصم اكثر من 195 دوله بعملاتهم الرقميه هذا الشيء فينا نقول عنه معجزه لنتعرف عليه على الواقع خلونا نلتقى بالطفله ساره شنابا لنسالها شويه اسئله ونختبرها سوا Sarah, welcome to Bedazzled. Hope you're having a lovely day. Hello, everyone. So tell us, what really inspired you to do what you've achieved? During last year, I did like a small summer camp where my mentor and many of my friends, we were doing a session where our mentor was teaching us different memory techniques. And I really loved it. Then I thought, why not do it more? So then my dad asked me, do you want to do it? I said yes. Then my dad said, "Oh, you know there's this um, event going on where you got to learn many different things." So I said yes, and I was ready for it. I really enjoyed those sessions, and I still wanted to do some more. Then I did one-to-one -one sessions with my mentor Sushant sir, and Sushant sir had inspired me. to make this big world record there was a memory technique that you had earlier mentioned could you tell us a little more about that my favorite technique is the storytelling technique it's super easy and very funny what you need to do is take the thing that you need to memorize or learn suppose i'll give you chinese yuan now how do you memorize that you look around yourself and see what you can connect it with and when you are done connecting it with then make a funny story out of it like i went to china and i had an ice cream which was about for 10 chinese yuan so you can make like a funny story which can help you to memorize different things at any point of time okay sir i'm going to throw you some trick questions and you're going to have to answer them as quickly as possible what's the currency used in trinidad and tobago dollar and what's the capital city port of spain What's the currency used in Spain? Euro. Okay, Sara. Last question. The yuan is used in which country? China. Thank you so much for being on our show, Sara. You were a visual treat. Thank you. Did that little girl impress you or not? If not impressed, I'm pretty sure she's inspired all of us. There's a lot more coming up after this quick break, so stay with us. وهلا انا والصبايا وصلنا لفقرتنا المفضله طبعا مع خبيره التجميل ريا لتعرفنا على بعض الحيل بالميك اب كيف نعملها بشكل بسيط وسهل ونطلع بشكل افضل واجمل خلونا نشوف سوا Hello and welcome back to Trending on Bedazzled. My name is Ria and I'm here to show you a few makeup hacks and tricks along the way which you can add to your makeup routine. For this episode, I'm going to be showing you a technique on how to make your makeup transfer proof. I know we all wear a mask throughout the whole day and we're worried about it smudging onto our mask or fading off from our face. So I'm going to be showing you a few tips and hacks on how to make it long wearing. If you're mainly looking for foundation which is going to be long wearing. So make sure whenever you're buying a foundation it has the word long wearing in it so it can last you throughout the whole day. So next we're going to be using our concealer. You want to make sure that you're going to get into the right corners of your eyes because our mask kind of rests on our under eyes. So we're going to conceal that really well. You could use your fingers, you can use a beauty blender. I prefer that over a brush. So now we're going to be contouring our face and I will show you how we're going to do this. So we're just going to get under our jaw so we can get a little definition and work our way downwards so it goes to our neck as well. So make sure you're blending upwards. 
And here you're just going to drag this onto your neck. So now we're going to go in with our setting powder and that's the whole intake of this whole show because we're going to be setting our whole concealer and um, foundation so it lasts you throughout the whole day and you want to make sure you get a very long lasting translucent white powder. So let's set this where we've put our concealer and foundation. This is gonna really help you make it last throughout the whole day and not transfer onto your masks. So now I'm gonna be showing you an eyeshadow tutorial, but um, you can go crazy with your eyes because basically your eyes are gonna do all the talking. You can do a smoky eyeshadow look. You can do a standard makeup eyeshadow look. Let me show you just a standard tutorial. So I know we all worry that our lipsticks are gonna get smudged onto our mask or it's gonna fade off from our lips. I'm gonna be showing you a way for it to last throughout the whole day. You wanna make sure you get a matte lipstick. And to make your lipstick long lasting, we're gonna dab on our translucent powder on our lips so it stays throughout the whole day. It lightens up your lipstick a bit and it makes sure that it does not, doesn't transfer to your mask. Not too much, just slightly on your... So this way, it won't transfer at all onto our mask or fingers. So this is really important. So for blush, we're not gonna be using a powder blush, we're gonna be using a cream-based blush because that lasts even longer on your face. So we're gonna put that, you can put that over your foundation, beneath your foundation, that doesn't really matter. I'm just going to show you over my foundation. So that's it for the tutorial. So I hope these tips were useful for you and you could add them to your makeup routine. My name is Ria and I will see you in the next show of Bedazzled. كتير عالم عانت بموضوع الكوفيد والإغلاق العام اللي صار بالعالم كله. بس بنفس الوقت في عالم استغلت هالموضوع وصارت تفكر كيف تطور حالها وكيف تفتح البزنس اللي خاص فيها ومن ضمنهم السيدة أورفاشي اللي رح تعرفنا اليوم شو عملت وشو صار فيها Hi Urvashi, thank you for joining us on Bedazzled. I hope you're having a lovely day. So I'm going to make this quick. What inspired you to start this business? I have always wanted to actually uh, get into uh, business, you know, and when uh, COVID hit, I thought might as well why fulfill someone else's dream. Let's make it big and let's fulfill your own dream, you know. And I'm, I've always been passionate about having parties, uh, calling friends over, having get together. All my parties are different from the last one. So that's when I thought, let's do something I'm passionate about. Let's do something I love. And I do uh, love, you know, trying different mocktails and drinks. So that's why I started this uh, business. And, you know, my inspiration was only my uh, love for get togethers and parties and having fun. All right. So, what makes Bar Enthusiast unique? Bar Enthusiast is a place uh, where uh, we curate different uh, barware, accessories, mocktail wear, party games from 10 different countries across the world and we get it together in one place. Uh, ideally, we started this because we realized there is a big gap in the market and uh, there is nothing available in this region. So why not you know, get something here for the people here? So that's how uh, Bar Enthusiast uh, we started and we have more than 250 different products which we deliver on the same day. We have customers calling, we help them in their parties, uh, in their bars, in their restaurants and that's what it makes it very unique. Okay, so what are your top three selling items? We have a few uh, top selling uh, products on the, the website, which uh, a lot of bars like, a lot of customers actually want it, you know, they pre-order in bulk. So one of them is this uh, lion glass, which has a 3D uh, mold inside. And uh, when you pour your drink, it feels like uh, the lion's face is coming out of the glass. So this is one top selling. Then we have a lot of different kind of tiki glasses. Tiki glasses, normally it's the world, uh, it's the age of Instagram. Everyone is going out, clicking pictures, posting on Instagram in different bars. And uh, we thought, why not? You know, now people are spending more time at home. So let's get the bar experience to their house. That's why we have a variety of uh, tiki glasses. These are these nice uh, wide belly uh, glasses. 
which uh, people uh, and clients like to swirl their drinks and so do we so these glasses do them for them yourselves and you don't really have to do anything about it you know thank you so much for joining us on bedazzled urvashi it was a pleasure talking to you all the very best for your business كنا عنا طموح لنوصل لمراكز أفضل ونحقق أهدافنا بس هالشي بطبيعة الحال بيتطلب جهد ومسؤولية كبيرة كرمال هيك اليوم رح نشوف بهالروبرتاج مع خبراء مختصين ليعلمونا كيف نخلي هالشي أسهل لحتى نحقق ونوصل لأهدافنا خلونا نشوف هالروبرتاج سوا It's career tip time. And today we're going to be talking about how to manage the flow of conversation in a job interview. There's typically moments at the beginning and also at the end of the job interview where you have the opportunity to influence the flow of the conversation. And today we're going to talk about three areas of preparation that will help you ensure that you're projecting the best version of you for the job interview. The first of those is making sure that you have good industry and competitor assessment. The second is making sure that you have good understanding of the person who's interviewing you. And the third is making sure that you have a full understanding of the company's background and are able to leverage that in the interview. So the first one is your industry's trends and your competitor trends. So you want to know if the direct competitors, have they just merged? Is there a major threat there? What are the global trends? What are the local trends? And you want to bring that up in your small talk. So say, yeah, it's so excited to be here. This is such a hot area right now. FinTech has grown by a thousand percent. And I see that you and some of your competitors are really serious about creating a digital SME platform. And that's really been my passion over the last few years. So I'm so excited to be here and talk to you about it. The second element is to make sure that you have a good understanding of the person who is interviewing you. Now remember, they have your CV, so they know all about you. And it's important that you do your research so that you can find out all about them. Most people who interview you are likely to have an active LinkedIn profile. They may have a Twitter feed, Facebook, Instagram. There are ways to research about the person who is interviewing you. When you have done that research, look for common connections. Have you worked in similar companies or similar industries before? Did you go to the same school? Do you have similar colleagues or people who you're similarly connected to? And you're able to use that during the small talk part of the conversation to establish a bond with that person. Remember, you're interviewed by a person. So if you can create an emotional bond with that person, you're more likely to give yourself the best chance. And then know the facts on the company. How did the company start? What is its history? What were its key milestones? What are its key products? And why are you excited about those? So you might say, I'm so excited to be here interviewing with P&G because I love marketing. I'm so excited about branding. And you guys wrote the book on branding. So I don't know where else would be the next best place for me to, to, to take the next step of my career, but here, because I love this industry so much. So that's one way that you could start. And those are the three key areas that you want to look at when you're starting small talk. Don't waste your time talking about sports or the game or something that's not related as to what's going to further your ability to secure that job. And what you're really saying is, I'm excited about you. I'm excited about your company. I'm excited about this industry. And this is where I want to take the next leg of my career. So that's Shane and Pete wishing all your dreams come true. وهلا صار دور محبين السينما والافلام. اكيد كل اسبوع بصير في اصدارات كثير وبنحتاج شو لازم نحضر وشو لازم ما نحضر. كرمال هيك رح نسهل لكم هالموضوع ونشوف هالروبورتاج سوا ونتعرف على اخر واهم الاصدارات. خلينا نشوف سوا. Welcome to yet another episode of Watch Me If You Can on Bedazzled. Today we're going to be talking about the horror film trilogy Fear Street, which dropped every consecutive week of July on Netflix. Before I go any further, let me warn you: this film is not for kids and definitely not for the faint-hearted. So if you're not fond of horror, blood, and gore, please look away. The rest of you, follow me. So what is good about Fear Street, you may ask? To begin with, it's a horror film trilogy. At a time when you have films and anthologies and web series dropping on OTT platforms, this is one film that's been divided into three parts, a story that is spanning 300 years. The film is based on Arl Stein's book Fear Street, who also had written Goosebumps earlier. While Goosebumps was a comedy, this one unfortunately isn't. 
The film begins with the brutal killings of a teenager at Shady Side Mall in the town Shady Side. Note that the town is called Shady Side because of all the brutalities, while its neighboring town is called Sunnyvale, which is bright and spunky all the time. While the population of Shady Side believe that this is the curse of a witch named Sarah Fear. Note the wordplay here. Sarah Fear, Fear Street, get it? All right. Is Sarah Fear the witch real or is it some psycho going around killing people? To unravel the mystery, Dina, our protagonist, goes back in time to save her friend Sam. The events that lead to the brutal killings of 1994 are unrevealed in the second film which is set in 1974. And what happens in 1974? To find out more about that, the story goes back 300 years earlier in 1666 where the actual story is revealed. What the director has cleverly done is using the same actors to play different characters across time so that you don't miss what is happening in the story. And how these three films are interconnected is what the film is all about. At a time when you have horror films and sequels like the Saw and the Conjuring series which have killings and killings and killings and killings after killings to make a franchise, this film plays cleverly by releasing one film in three parts and still the same characters and the same story. For those of you that are not fond of horror, season 2 of the series Never Have I Ever has dropped on Netflix, featuring Maitreya Ramakrishnan, Richa Murjani and Purna Jagannathan produced by Mindy Kaling. Never Have I Ever is a coming of age teenage drama loosely based on Mindy Kaling's personal experiences in the Boston area. Mindy Kaling was also the writer and the executive producer of the series chronicling the life of Devi and her friends. If you like comedy dramas, then watch Never Ever Ever. If you like lal rang acha lagta hai khun ka, then you watch Fear Street. Whatever you want to watch, do share your views on our social media handles. I'll see you next week. هيك بتكون خلصت حلقتنا لليوم بس ما تنسوا تتركوا لنا كل ارائكم واقتراحاتكم واذا في مواضيع خاصه حابين نناقشها سوا على صفحاتنا على مواقع التواصل الاجتماعي من هون للاسبوع الجاي بتمنى لكم اسبوع اكثر من رائع بشوفكم عن قريب